Jackson Systems is your controls expert in the HVAC industry. With our top-notch technical support and customer service, we make life easier for you, the HVAC contractor. We offer free trainings on any products sold here at Jackson Systems, along with our filter fetch program, free thermostat and printing, home and business automation with connected sensors, cameras, and even smart stats from Nest, Ecobee, Honeywell, White Rogers, Google, and more. Visit us at jacksonsystems.com to see the products that continue to win industry acclaim among contractors worldwide. Jackson Systems, controls done right. Hey guys, we're going to do something a little bit different than the pace we've set for the last few Tradesman podcasts. For the last few podcasts, we've been going over some more, I don't want to say emotional things, but it's like emotional aspects of the job, other aspects of the job. We're going to get back down to a little bit of the nitty gritty of the actual job just for a little bit here i'm sure we'll go back and forth between more practical training and some behind the scenes stuff and some of my reminiscing stories and all that good stuff so i want to talk about duct work just a little bit about duct work and just a couple of the ways that we size duct work or i've learned to size duct work over the years i mean you can do it to the nth degree using manual d friction rate chart. You can figure out what the static on your system is going to be and design a duct system around that. It's pretty cool how accurate you can actually be in advance. You can actually predict your running statics and stuff like that. It's really cool and it's pretty accurate. I found that I get pretty close predicting what the static is going to be at different blower speeds. It's really interesting to be able to do. But on a daily level, you don't really have to do that stuff. I mean, it's great to be able to do it and one of those things that you should be able to train yourself to do it. But in the end, you just need to know basically what size ductwork you need. And we'll talk residential because a lot of the duct systems aren't going to be extensive enough to have you changing duct size based on total effective length. There's going to be some pretty good rules of thumb that are out there for residential ductwork that you can hold to and have a good static and make sure you have enough airflow in the system. Especially nowadays with these communicating systems, inverter drive systems, you want to make sure you have enough air you don't have fault codes, communication fault codes, and fault codes for low airflow or high static or whatever, depending on the system. I used to get a few fault codes on the Amana communicating systems if the customers used the wrong filters. So they're really sensitive. So let's talk about ductwork. Now, I said before in one of my other, not podcasts, but videos, that we go by a six square inches per thousand BTU rule. Now, I have my phone out here, and I'm going to set up the calculator here. So let's go with a ton and a half. So a ton and a half is 18,000 BTUs. So that's going to be 18 sets of 1,000, basically. So we're going to go 18 times 6, and we get 108. So that's our square inches, rough square inches for our supply duct work coming out of the unit. So let's see what that is. If we're looking at stock rectangular duct work, we have by 8 tall, it's 14 by 8, because 14 by 8 gives you 112 square inches. And you can see how that fits together with ton and a half. You probably see similar sizes. Now, if we're going to a round duct, we're going to have to use a different style formula, because we have to use pi r squared. What does that mean? Well, pi is a constant, and we're going to use 3.14. Pi goes on forever, but we're only going to use the hundredths place, 3.14, because that's as accurate as we need to be. We probably don't have to be that accurate. So pi r squared, we know what pi is, 3.14. r squared, r is radius. Basically, if you have diameter of a circle, you're going from one point on the circle to the other side directly across, and that's your diameter. Radius is a point from the center of the circle to the outer section of the circle. It's basically half your diameter. So if you have a circle that's 10 inches wide, your radius is 5 inches. So pi r squared. And all squared means is you're multiplying a number by itself. Say 5 squared is 5 times 5, that's 25. 10 squared is 100. So it's pretty easy to know. And then the reverse of that is square root. The square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 25 is 5. So let's figure out what we need to do for a ton and a half system. Keeping in mind that we multiplied 6, that's our rule of thumb, times 18 because we have 18,000 BTUs, and we got 108. So what do we need to do with a circular duct to get to that 108? Well, let's try a 12 inch round. Let's see a 12 inch round to do it. Cause we can only use stock sizes. We're not making our own duct work. Maybe you are, but I'm not. So let's try 
12 inch round. So pi r squared. I have my calculator here, so I'm going 3.14 times r squared. Now if we have a 12 inch duct, that's the diameter, the radius is six. Because of the way this is set up, we have to respect the order of operations. Now that's a whole different thing. Think back to your high school math days. Order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's a mnemonic device that we had to use. Please is parentheses. Excuse is exponent. And that's what the squared is. That's an exponent. My multiplication. Dear division. Aunt is addition. Sally is subtraction. So because we have an exponent, r squared, the squared makes it an exponent, we're going to have to do that part of the equation first. So on our calculators, we'll write 3.14 times parentheses 6 times 6, because that's 6 squared. And remember, 6 is our radius. That gives us 113 square inches, or just over 113 square inches. That's big enough for our 10.5 system. Now keep it in mind that on the return side, you may enlarge that to lower the rate of speed in the air. I typically went for round sizes, I'd go up one round size. And if you have flex, you might go up two round sizes, depending on the length of run. But if you have short runs, you can probably go up one round size, meaning you have 12 inch supply duct coming off, and we always used round galvanized piping. On the return side, if you wanted to run a short flex, maybe you make it 14 inch. It probably doesn't have to be if it's a real short run, but to be on the safe side, you can run 14 inch. That's not a concrete rule. That's just a tip from being in the field for so long. So let's try something in the five ton range. So we have a five ton. We did a ton and a half. Let's try five ton. So five tons, we have six, which is our rule of thumb, times 60, because we have 60,000. So we need 360 square inches. Now let's take our 360. We'll see what that comes out as in a by eight size. 360 divided by 8 equals 45. So obviously we're not going to be using 45 by 8 duct. Not in residential anyway. So let's go to a by 12. See if that makes it any better. So 360 divided by 12 is 30. So you could use 12 by 30. Or if you have room, you can go to a by 14. And that becomes uh, 26, roughly. 26 by 14. Now the question is, what happens with round duct? Because round duct is only available readily up to a certain size. So let's see what happens when we use 20. So we have 20 inch round. We're going to take pi r squared. Remember, we're going to write 3.14. We're going to multiply that. We're going to put parentheses 10 because if our diameter is 20, our radius is 10. We multiply 10 times 10 and we get 314. So it's still a little bit shy on our five ton size. You might have to have a plenum and multiple taps to get the proper amount of square inches. Or you're going to have to use the largest available round size, like the 20 or 22 if you can, and just make do with it. Because it's going to be a little bit short on square inches, but as I've seen when I travel around different job sites, especially in service capacity, you see that a lot of times the ductwork is too small. It's way too small. And you can see when it's going to be okay. And what I mean by that is, I'll take for example my buddy Chuck Pierce who's on YouTube, Comfort Plus. He did a unit a few years ago, which I believe, going from memory, was like a three and a half ton unit. But he ran an undersized return because it was short. I want to say it was like 16 inch flex. Normally you'd say, whoa, that's, that's not gonna work. Because it was so short, it was only five or 10 foot long. So his static was still good. So you had to take this with a grain of salt. If you have an extremely short run, you don't have to run as large of a duck. The caveat there is the fact that you may have more noise. While your static may be good, your noise may not be good. But generally, use these rules of thumb, especially in residential where the ductwork is typically a certain length. It doesn't get very excessive unless you're in like a real grandiose house. We'll study more about this. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Not really scientific, just kind of a rough way to figure up ductwork, get you familiar with it. Also, if you're out in the service capacity, you can sort of gauge whether or not your duct system is woefully too short. If you go to a 5-ton system, you needed 360 square inches, and you have 200 square inches, it's going to be a problem. If you have 300 to 315 square inches, probably not going to be a problem. 
unless it's extremely long run. So that just gives you a little bit of a head start right there, guys. We'll talk more about this in an upcoming podcast. We'll get back to a little bit of what we were talking about before, some of our anecdotal tales, maybe a few interviews coming up soon, but there's a little practical training. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I always say, I am Zach. I am the tradesman. Guys that have listened to us at HVAC Shop Talk for a while have heard us talk about getting a free Zoom Lock Toolkit with the purchase of a certain amount of ZoomLock flame-free refrigerant fittings. Well, that's true. If you purchase 350 of the flame-free ZoomLock fittings, you can get a free tool with that. But what you might not know is if you go to the ZoomLock Roadshow and make that purchase, you can get it for 300 ZoomLock flame-free refrigerant fittings. That's quite a deal, guys. Go to ZoomLockRoadshow.com and find out where that truck's at so you can flag it down and get your Zoom Lock tool today.